Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Today we're going to have two special guests on with us, Carlos and Lisa. They're going to go through their life story, how they started, and where they're at now with their business. They are in the trucking industry, so stay tuned to see what they've got to share with us. We'll see you guys. <laughs> we started off with one. That was years, years, years and years ago, over 20-something years ago. And... Um, you had an accident with your first I truck. Had an accident. He had an accident with his first truck. Um, we lost the truck. We lost the truck because we thought we had insurance on it through the company he was working for, and we had no insurance. We had to put our life savings into that truck, and then within two weeks, he crashed. He totaled it. Yeah, and the only reason he totaled it was because um, all the traffic on the uh the um, five what is that interesting the interstate yeah all the all the traffic on the interstate came to a halt and carlos had a family full of people in front of him and next to him in the next lane was another truck like his it was a dump truck and he thought if i hit these people i'm gonna kill them so he went and hit the truck instead and since it was full it totaled his truck so how did y'all how did y'all pick up from there especially with that toll that that put on you we had to buy a truck on credit. On credit, it was a mm -hmm. fifty-two thousand dollar truck. And yeah, we did like we bought like um, almost a new truck. Almost, yes, it was almost a new truck. We had it mm, about a month, and the turbo went on the truck. <laughs> so more problems. <laughs> more problems. We had no money, and I right. said, I said to the company, "Well, you should be covering this. You know, it's a fairly new truck." So with a lot of my fighting back and forth with them, they fixed the turbo. But during that time, he was out of work. We had no income coming in. Um, right. So we started to use credit cards for everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. use this credit card, use that credit, just moving money around to try and make it. And uh, finally, we got, into a hole. <laughs> we got into a big hole because the company he was working for at the time um, for almost a month and a half, kept telling everybody, we have your paychecks next week. We have your paychecks next week. Mm -hmm. We have your paychecks next week. Um, they owed us almost around $12,000 by the time. So we had no income coming in. I was paying mortgage, everything with credit. And the company. Oh, wow. So the company went out of business. So I lost my money. Oh, so you never got the money at all. Never oh, got the money. Man. Never got the money, but we kept saying we're not giving up. This is what he wanted to do. He was really interested in doing this. On the other hand, me, I would cry every time, stressed out, thinking, you know, we have four kids. So we were thinking, how are we going to support our family? Um, but we did it. He applied for okay. SIDS several times. No one would contact him, but he really wanted to work there. So he's like, I'm not giving up. He kept applying. And finally, they called him. So guys, I got a question. So when you came to SIDS, how quickly was it for you getting that second truck? It took me a while because we were paying the debt, right? From the past? Yeah, we had $150,000 in debt from that one problem we had with the truck and then not getting paid. We ended up in $150,000 in debt. So we had to pay that first. Yeah and also put in our years with SIDS before someone would trust for him to be able to bring in a second truck. Um, when, right. he, when he was ready to bring in that second truck, <laughs> I was no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, I don't want to do this, you know? And he said, well, I want to do this, you know? And I said, well, I started coming up with, I don't want to say negative, but I started to come up with, well, what if this happens? And how are we going to do this? Because I wanted to know what our plans were along the way. He was just ready to jump in. But I'm more yeah. of a, you know, you have to know what's going to be the plan because of everything we just went through. And uh, right, absolutely. it was, how many years were you there? It was quite a few years. Yeah, to like. I think it was ten, almost 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Like really? Yeah, I think it was so, almost 10 years. What was life like that 10 years of Carlos working, and then you're trying to pay off that $150,000 of debt. What was the family dynamic like? Did you have one kid, two kids? What was the, how did, how did that work? So we had four kids by then. <laughs> okay. um, we had four kids. We had our kids young. We, we 
plan that we want to have our kids young. So when we were this age, our kids are all grown. Our youngest one is 22. Um, so okay. we wanted to make sure because now we can enjoy life. But right. during that process, I personally felt like a single mom um, because Carlos worked nights. I was working six days. He right. was working six days a week, week. For, ev for all those 10 years. He worked six days a week for the extra money of that one day um, so that we can progress. Um, so we, um, I was working at uh, Spectrum, which at the time had been Bright House and they bought it. It was over right. in Maitland. I live two hours from there. So I drove two hours to and two hours from every day for my position because I had been there 18 years. I had good benefits, which I needed for the children because Sid didn't, you know, he's a contractor. He doesn't get benefits. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I, I did everything with my kids from their school events to um, sitting them down. It was like four kids. It's a lot of kids. So. I had them every day sitting at the table as though I was a school teacher after work. By the time I got done with them, it was 10 at night and it was time to get back in bed and start for the next day. Yeah. And keeping wow. them quiet while Carlos slept in the day was not easy. Carlos, what was your mindset the whole time? Because um, I know thoughts I've had where you fail and then you have to do it and then hopefully it works out and something else comes up. So like... I mean, you get a truck, your whole life savings, it breaks down, or I'm sorry, you get into an accident. Um, then you have to buy another truck and then 10 years of just paying off debt. Like Carlos, what was your mindset the whole time? What pushed you to keep going basically? My dream, keep going. Uh, there were days that I didn't sleep at all. Those days that I have to stay in the truck, and my wife was telling me, "Oh, how you do this?" And you know, when you want something in life, you just gotta keep fighting for it, you know. And we're still doing it. We are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're still fighting for we it. We do want to keep going as far as we can, you know, and just showing people and like my family. I got family that. Because it, I got in, into the truck industry, they were um, giving me like, telling me bad things about it. Yeah. Oh, right. do that because in Colombia, I'm from Colombia, South America. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Usually, the truck drivers is people they don't they, they didn't went to school, so right. it's, it's like a bad reputation for drivers. You know, when you say you're a driver, and I keep doing it and keep doing it and showing my family that, that, that when you got a dream that, that you can do it, you know? Carlos's family, um, when he was going for his CDL, um, were mm -hmm. all negative. You're not going to be able to pass the test. Um, you know, when I met Carlos, he didn't speak English. Um, mm -hmm. When I met him, I didn't speak Spanish. Um, I, I am from mm -hmm. Hispanic background, but we spoke English at home. So it was even hard. I understood everything, but I was afraid to talk. So it was hard for us to communicate even when we met, but I taught him all the English he knows. And he taught me all the Spanish I know. And I, sp I speak fluent Spanish now. And um, everybody was just negative, telling him he's not going to be able to make it. First truck we bought, his mom said, oh, that's not going to work out for you. And then we got into the accident. And then it was, yeah. Um, See, I told oh, so. <laughs> yeah, oh, you bought another <laughs> truck. And she saw the truck park here by our house. And she said, I don't know why you did that. That's not going to work out. And I said, mm -hmm. stop. You guys need to stop. Like, this is going to work out. He's going to make it, you know. And, oh, but, you know, that's not a, a good job to have. It was always something negative. And I said to him, if this is what you want, go for it. Don't give up. Well, where we are now, <laughs> all of his family own trucks. Yeah. <laughs> this all his sisters, he has two sisters, they own trucks. His sister's in the trucking industry industry now with her husband. So there you go. There you go. Cousins. Yeah, everybody. At what point were you guys in that situation where you were sleeping on the floor, basically? As you said. We started with the truck. When we started we with the truck, money. we didn't have anything. We got an apartment. Um our apartment was in a really bad neighborhood, <laughs> really bad. They were selling drugs outside. Um, 
We had no credit. We we didn't have anybody to help us, but I can say that we probably wouldn't have taken anybody's help either because yeah. we right. we decided to be together. So um, our family all against us on um, us wanting to be together. Um, right. You know, Carlos coming from another country, and my parents both like you know what is he going to be able to give you? And I said, well, you know what? Mm -hmm. He has a good heart. And that's what I like about him. It's the way he treats me. And that's all that kept in my mind. And I, it's weird because you always now teach your kids, you know, that you want them to be with somebody financial stable because you want the best for them. And now I understand what my mom was saying back then, but in my mind was how the person treated me. And we got our place. We had no furniture. We had nobody to help us. We had no pots and pans. We had nothing. So we got a mattress and it was a used mattress. We put um, a plastic over it and that was our place to sleep. Um, and during that time we were having children. I was pregnant and I remember the funniest part to me about the mattress is I would wake him up in the middle of the night and say, I have to go to the bathroom, but I was this big of pregnant. So he would have to get up and pick me up so we could go, I could get up to go to the bathroom. Um, right. But, you know, having a little bit more now and looking back, those were really fun times. Those yeah. were, yeah. Um, those were times that I think you're most close to each other. Um, you know, everybody else is against you and pushes you more close to each other. Um, and right. that's probably why we made it. When we got married, his mom said, um, I'll congratulate you when you make a year because you're not going to make a year. Mm. And we're 29 well, years. <laughs> there you go. Man, there you go. But that's yeah, we started, we started with the mattress and little by little um, started to buy things for our apartment. And then my mom said, when are you going to move from that place you're living in? And I said, when I have money, you know, I don't right. have money to move right now. And um, my both parents are not alive, um, but they probably were a little bit of a blessing in the sense that my mom said, no, you've got to get out of there. And um, we actually, uh, they lent us $5,000 and we bought uh, our first house, which was a two bedroom, one bathroom. I think we paid 440 a month. It was like, a, back then it was like a duplex, you know? So that was our little by little. We started. Yeah. Little by little. That's, yeah, little that's all little. it takes. Mm -hmm.